I'm hoping you can see this clearly. Uh, this is a full size brother knit leader sheet. It's marked from naught to 32 centimeters either side which means you can in theory draw something 64 centimeters wide um, whether that would actually fit on your machine is a, another question just taken a random pattern from a magazine it's for a child it doesn't really matter the principles the same you draw on each of these it has the measurements you pick the measurement for the size you want I never draw a full width pattern because it's a waste of time and effort so always divide your width measurements by two you can't actually see the measurements on here um, but half of that I've drawn the back it goes up to there and I put the front neck in and I put a sleeve on in a different colour so as you can see it can all fit on quite happily um, the full width of, of the back is 38 centimetres so I've halved that and if my mass is correct that's 19 centimetres and you should be able to see that I have drawn there 19 the big squares are one centimetre the smaller square is a half a centimetre. It then asked us to, I always, just as a point, I also always ignore the rib because I roughly know I want 20 to 25 rows for a child and 25 to 30 for an adult. So I just knit that and then start the knit leader off. Again, it's just you can put the rib in if you want but then you've got to do a tension square and get the stitch scales and swap them over so I always start at the bottom of the proper knitting as I call it um, it's asking here for 21 centimeters so I have drawn a line straight up to where 21 centimeters in length it's got the uh, numbers up the sides and the middle. It then says to come in for the armhole by two centimetres. So we move our line in by two centimetres. It then says that bit is, if you can see, is 17 centimetres. So I've counted up. 17 centimeters and that's the shoulder the shoulder on this is 10 at uh, 9 so I've counted in 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and put another line so that's the shoulder the dotted line across is the back because on this one it's got a, a straight back neck. Now it says on here that the back neck should measure 16, if you can see it. Because we're only doing half, that should equal to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it does, so my maths wasn't too bad. When it comes to um, doing the front neck... It shows you, if you can see again, the depth of the neck, which for this one, I'm doing the first size in this, is seven. So I count down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put a dot there. That's where the neck shaping is going to start. Now, what they never put on is the actual measurement of the bit that you decrease there before you start the neck so the easiest way to do it is I look at the front instructions and on this it tells me to cast off the center 20 stitches I go to the tensions that they have 
which is 27 stitches to 10 centimetres, which equals 2.7 stitches to 1 centimetre. I divide that 20 by 2.7 and it will tell me how many centimetres that cast off is supposed to be. Um, it worked out at seven something or other. Um, I then divided it by two because we're only doing half of it and it came out at three and three quarters. One, two, three and three quarters. Not quite on the full line. I then look at the pattern again and it tells me um, that I needed to, after I've done the shaping, that we needed to do um, 18 rows straight. Again, I go to the tension, which says it's uh, 61 rows to 10 centimetres, which is 6.1 uh, rows per centimetre. And I then divide the um, 18 rows by 6.1 and it told me how many centimetres I needed to come down on the pattern for knitting straight and I then just freehand join. The same with the sleeve, that's a lot easier. The sleeve is 21 at the bottom. So half of that, because we're only drawing half of it, is 10 and a half. So I've 10 and a half. The width at the top is 32, which is 16, so it's going out to 16. And the length up to the straight bit was 26, so I've drawn 26 centimetres straight up there, put a, a little line there. It tells me that the straight bit is two, so I put two there, draw a line across. And that is the sleeve, as I say, and the back is exactly the same. Um, so I've just put a dotted line at the top. For those of you with the built-in knit leader on the Brother 881 and 891, you've got a half size sheet. And you'll notice that the zero on this is not in the middle. And with the 881 and the 891, you do draw the pattern half size width wise. So I'm going to put the naught from this one on the naught of that one. And you would draw it on the same. Hope that makes sense. The and square I knitted the other day. I measured it with a centimetre ruler, widthwise and lengthwise, and I wrote it down. And it says that um, on stocking stitch, it measured thirteen five wide. So we choose the 13.5 wide stitch scale. You'll have your stitch measures tube and you literally look for the one that's got 135 in it. And as that says, a stitch scale 14. I find stitch scale 14, which is in here somewhere. There, the one with 14 on the end. And you'll see that this has got several numbers on the end. That says upside down 135. That says 133. That says 132. That says 134. But we wanted 135. So we take the one with 135 on it. And that's the stitch scale we're going to use. Half size, we would choose the one that matches up to your sheet and says 
one three five on the end hoping you can see this properly um, you roll your knit leader sheet up and you put it in the top holes of the sheet guides you then feed in the first end by turning the knob until it catches on the other side I have to move that over on the other side there is a little white button which I hope you can see me pressing you press that down and you align this so that it's roughly straight and it's fed in and then feed it down make sure it's straight and then take your strip let me just move that round again take the strip with the 135 on and place it in front of that silver bar and line the dotted line up with the zero on there you then look across the, you then look across to your line which is quite difficult to see because I've got tension mast in the way now as you can see our line is there that You'll have to take my word for it, it's 55, so that's 56. We cast on 56, 56 stitches either side of zero. It's as simple as that. The 60 rows on the tension swatch measured 14.5. Press the clutch in. And turn. put the slider the top one to 14 if I can't see properly I think I've got that on 15 to 14 and the bottom one to the 5 and release the clutch which is easier so that's it push down and pull forward that will give you your row measurements I've just knitted, as you can see, 86 rows, which has brought me to where the line has moved in and it's now showing it against the 50. One thing I always do is I write down things like this. So when you do the back or the front, you can just follow this as a pattern. In fact, you can click through this and write your own pattern. So that's row 86 which I think I'll be able to read and not as 36. I'm now going to cast off to where there's 50 stitches left. I'm going to go around the gate peg so it's not too tight. Which again, I hope you can see. Cast off to 50. And I knit across to the other side. And I cast off that side to 50 as well. Now I'm going to continue to knit until I reach the neckline shaping and I'll come back to you on that when we get there we're nearly at the uh, neckline we're going to do one more row across not quite
quite there yet. Bring it back right down because this is where we're dividing for the neck. So right down, the row counter says one, two, eight. And it's now telling me if you can see. We should cast off to 11 by the look of it. So that would be, we're now going to use the hold position. So put your carriage on hold. Bring all the needles on the opposite side of the carriage forward. To just try so you can actually see the, uh, the needle bed. So I've brought all the needles up to 10 there because as far as I'm concerned, you, you, you can do 11. Bring it to 11 and that's what I'm casting off, 11. Make sure your carriage is set on hold. And then knit that row. You'll see, you won't because the carriage is in the way, you'll see there's that's now chunked up to um, 12. Well, 13 actually, but you can only put one needle into hold on that knitting side. So bring the next one out. trying to get that and the uh, needle bed in which is going to be difficult um, I've brought an extra needle out here if you can see and that's now going to make an automatic wrap so I knit back to the other side Now this is where it can get a bit tricky. Um, because that's now showing you 14 or 15 even. You can't do more than um, two stitches at a time into hold uh, when you're coming towards it. So we will actually be put I'll bring two forward because I can do two forward on this side of the carriage and knit across that's now showing 16 so I'm going to bring, this is saving holes, so bring another needle forward. That's not knitted properly because I haven't got two hands on the job. Bring that forward, knit a row. I think I probably need a weight there. Sorry for the seasick. Um, yeah, if it is, it's 17 now, so I can bring another two forward on this side. Knit. Bring one forward. Knit. Bring one forward. Knit. Bring one forward. And I would begin now to, you're not seeing much of anything there, are you? Begin to, on the neck edge, bring one needle into hold. 
but not on the other side. Or it's on, actually on the neck edge and that stops holes forming. And just keep going till it looks as though we're aiming for 24. Which is what I've got. And then just knit straight until you get to the shoulder. take that shoulder off on waist yarn. The second side of the neck you're going to wind in it leader back to the beginning of the neck shaping and you're going to set your row counter back to where it was. Now if you'd done as I said and written down every the needle numbers and the row numbers that you did that you'd be able to copy it exactly but I didn't so I'm going to um, just muddle through bring uh, bring your carriage over to the other side after you've taken it that shoulder off on waist down put the leader tripper down now, before we'd said it was 11, so we need to push these needles back into working position to where we had the 11 off. I hope you can see that. I'm going the wrong way with the camera. Push those needles back. Rejoin the yarn. And knit across and bring another needle as I say you can only do one on this side but this prevents holes and it's doing an automatic wrap uh, spot the deliberate mistake I didn't put the uh, other shoulder needles out of work And then knit back and I say and if you'd written it down uh, you'd know which rows you were uh, decreasing on it which you weren't I'm sure we did two so I'll bring two out one wait there did we do another two I say don't be like me write it down so you know what you're doing and I'm sure I didn't uh, do two there And then just start doing them on the neck edge. Until I believe it's 24, which is what we're on. And then knit the straight bit. And I don't we probably can't see. 156 is what I knit it to. So I knit to 156 this time. Only I haven't been going far enough to trip my row counter, but don't tell anyone. So we'll just um, bust this one. Take that shoulder off on waist yarn. Both shoulders are off on waist yarn. What you do now is you pick up the loop. I always take that, 
if you can see I go under and I pick that loop up first on the straight bit just stops a hole forming and then pick up the loops not the knots the loops put them onto a needle This is from the straight part of the neck that you knitted. There's an error there, so ignore that. And always pick up a sh the shoulder stitch that's on the waist yarn. Now that's uh, come to 33, so I pick up the other side of the neck to 33. Now, again, write this number down because you want to remember it. Uh, we've gone 33 to 33, which gives us 66 stitches on the front neck. Now do a row at main tension with the main yarn. Cancel hold. Take off on waist yarn. I cheated and didn't knit the whole of this jumper, so don't think it's looking a bit short. I'm hoping you can see if I hang it on the waist yarn. You can see the the neck not very clearly because of the lighting which I can only apologize that's the neck there's the straight bits you picked up so that when you come to do your neck band you know that you've got 66 stitches there and when you've done the back you'll know how many stitches for the back neck that's straight across that one um, and it make you don't have to then estimate you just pick up all those stitches back up and however you want to knit your band that's what you do hope that was informative <laughs>